a red soil this mountain and it's been in my um, it influenced my paintings uh, for the last 10 years but uh, this idea came when I made the, the illustration for the book how the Pitskajak River became muddy and uh, so the Pitskajak River is reddish and uh, people used to call it chocolate river and um, so that's how the red came into uh, my paintings a painting i start i put the red and then i put a darker color on top and then i have uh, sometimes to carve a drawing into it and when i carve the drawing the red pops up a bit like when you uh, when you dig in the garden, the red pops up. Yeah, some people say it's, there's a childlike um, quality of it. I like I like it to be spontaneous and uh, fun. It has to be that way, fun. If it's not fun, let's forget it. <laughs> So this painting is about, uh, you know, a painting is always uh, some sort of research about light. So the first thing you have in the middle is the light bulb. So I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna make it look like the light comes from the light bulb. But the theme is the uh, nutcracker. Well, you have the ballerina, and I know there's, I never seen the nutcracker. I'm embarrassed about it. I'm painting about the nutcracker and I've never seen it. And that's something I never do to paint about something I don't know. But here, I know there's ballerinas and there's rats. So maybe that's all I need for this uh, and the light. So the focus really is the light and then the stage. An animal on stage with uh, a person. So something that usually people on stage don't want to have to compete with animals, but uh, so there's a tension there. Those were uh, studies of different type of colors. I wanted to uh, to uh, explore with the with the grass, like that grass we see on farm, like turning orange. So, so that was a study for that. And this one here was more of a study of a different type of tree. Because I like doing trees and I like to do different characters. I did like uh, foliage a lot, but this one has like, it's between foliage and needles, as a uh, evergreen. And on this one, I decided to choose the palette before the content. I didn't want to have any blue like I had in the two other ones because blue is so consistent in my, in my expression that I don't want it to become like a limitation. So it's mainly like ochre. That was the uh, theme I gave myself. Daytime, nighttime, change colors and, uh, and then I wanted it to be inhabited so I put a person in there to me when there's nobody on a painting there's something missing so I have to put someone in there thinking or uh, doing whatever but uh, to me often that's what gives a meaning to the painting and it's part of the meaning also that comes up uh, when I put a person. If I don't put a person, then it becomes wallpaper. But if I put a person, change. The dynamics change. I like to uh, also to uh, the pro not respect the proportion because if we look at the person compared to nature, it shows that nature is really powerful. One way to remind me that Sometimes we think we control too much and we have to let nature decide for us. One day, a journalist from L'Etoile Academy 
described me as a, advent, a poetic adventurer. And I thought, yeah, that, that's me. Like, uh, I do go to place, exotic places such as in Canada, like in Nunavik, where we don't go, but where we should go more. Like I've been there four times and it's so beautiful. There, uh, it looks like the planet is brand new. Like rivers are pure and air is pure. And uh, so I do like to go and sketch a lot. And I do sketch a lot when I'm there because there's all kind of sun also in summertime. And, uh, and when I come back, I turn them into some poem where I play with uh, flatness and perspective and also the rapport between L, each element where I sometimes emphasize by making an element bigger rather than respecting the proportion. Here it would be, uh, if you look at the size of the boat, the people are quite small, like living here, as opposed to the iceberg. So to me, it was the focus is the, the those uh, block of ice that are so uh, huge and poignant. And also they look like lamps. Like It looks like there's a light coming from the inside of those things. The way they attract lights, it looks from the light comes from within. So it's beautiful things to witness. When I go to nature, it's to draw. And uh, I draw and do all kind of sketch, sketches like a... And uh, when I go in July in the Nunavik, it's easy to draw because like uh, the sun set at uh, 11 o'clock at night. But at 2 o'clock a.m. it's already up. And between 11 and 2, there's enough light to keep reading. So, so it's the perfect time to go. And from there, I sketch. And when you sketch somewhere, after uh, an hour on the same spot, you find all kind of new details that you haven't seen before. So the idea of going and taking picture to me is not as useful as to go and to sketch and take time to look at what's there. The purple mountain with the blue and the green mountains, I didn't invent that. They were there in front of me. And the purple one was really far away. Probably a mist made it look like purple. And then the next far was the mist make it look blue and the closest were green. So this painting here is a combination of perspective because you could be far away and look at the village from far away and you see some depth, but though the mountains are a plat, like it looks more flat. So it's a combination of both. Uh, I'm not interested to represent uh, a landscape like, a, like we see it, like uh, I want it to be process. So I'm not documenting something geographic necessarily, I, although it's a real place where I visited in the Nunavik. But uh, so that dialogue about flatness and the perspective, I think it's kind of interesting. I would say, can we let you discover me instead of giving you all my, my keys? I always have ideas. Give me a give me a white wall, I'll manage. I'll find something to do. So yeah.